Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. Today I'm making plans for another sew-in. Come on, I'll show you what I've got going. Last weekend I attended a stay-at-home retreat, which is essentially a local two-day sew-in. I love these things because it's time blocked off dedicated to, well, relatively distraction-free sewing but I like to make the most of this time and get as much completed as possible, both because it's dedicated time and because I'm kind of a show off. I mean, guys, like you didn't know that already. <laughs> With all of this in mind, let me take you through how I prepare so that I can accomplish my goals during these events. First, like almost every project, I try as much as possible to separate decision-making from execution. So I decide what projects I will work on and then I do as much prep work at home as possible. My energy is still limited post hip surgery, so working on prep, such as pulling fabrics, scraps, choosing colors, pressing, cutting, marking, you get it, in pockets of available time and energy works well. This is also useful if you have small children, an outside job, or anything else that demands large portions of your time or energy. Work when you can at your pace on prep steps. Next, I sort each prepped project, prep, prepped project, that's hard, into its own tray or box, little tray or box with any associated notes or patterns. Y'all, most of my patterns and notes look, you know, like this. Chicken scratch on the back of an envelope. This one I got fancy and colored in EQ8, but you still see my scratch notes on it. It's nothing fancy, but I have all of my notes within the project box. I like to have differing tasks so I don't get as fatigued physically or mentally bored so I don't get bored. I make sure I have variable steps to complete. I try to plan to do as much at my sewing station as possible so as to not tie up community resources more than necessary and also so I'm not up and down a million times. It's good to move around but every time that I walk across the room I get distracted by "Ooh, what are you working on or laughing and talking with someone else which is fine, but sometimes I just need to work. Next, I make a detailed list of items I need to pack, because of course I do. <laughs> I change my sewing machine needle, I clean and oil my bobbin case, I wind several bobbins, and I put in a brand new rotary blade. I try and pack very few just-in-case items. Streamlining as much as possible keeps me focused and efficient rather than scat- My kitten's in here, sorry. <laughs> rather than scattered and distractible. Plus, you know, I have to schlep all that stuff in and out of the car, in and out of the venue and unpack and repack and that's not fun. That's not the fun part. Once I am set up, then I work. I work like my life depends on it. I try to use the dedicated and limited sewing time to the fullest advantage. I'm still somewhat physically limited and I have to get up and move and my energy levels are not, not what they will be, so I fatigue easily. And working in this way, make sure that I get the most out of my time. I prep in those pockets of time at home, and then when I'm at the sew-in, I can plow through projects. Now, I know that speed and quantity are not everyone's goals, and they aren't always mine either. Whatever your goals, setting yourself up for streamlined work, it's just good practice. A note about choosing projects. I do not work on complicated projects at a sew-in and definitely not at a sleepaway retreat where people might bring snacks like jello shooters, you know who you are, <laughs> or other adult beverages. I like to be able to sew quickly and not have to be too concerned with precision or miscutting or miss sewing. This is where the prep work really comes in handy. You know, I, while I'm laughing or cutting up or tired or silly, I, some people can do that. 
One of the ladies this weekend was working on an Elizabeth Hartman pattern with all of those tiny pieces. But when there is noise and laughter and storytelling happening, my brain cannot do that. I just can't walk that path. So I keep it simple because that's what works for me. So last weekend, what did I take? I took paired and marked half square triangles for three different projects. Over 300 of those suckers, guys. I pulled and paired all of my fabrics and drew all of my lines ahead of time while I was sitting and watching TV. I took two quilt tops in need of borders, three quilt top parts stacked like these back here, ready to assemble, leaders and enders tumblers, and my list. Because of course I have a list. Then I just worked down the list. In about 10 hours of sewing spread over two days, I got all 336 half square triangles sewn for those three projects. I got borders added to one of the quilt tops and I got two quilt tops fully assembled. They're back here. I have another sew in right now, tonight actually, and I've regrouped and processed and reprepped. I cut and pressed all of my half square triangles. I had my helpers, my adult children, lay out two more quilts. I laid out the blocks for my rainbow half square triangle project. And here is what I have to work on. I have three quilt tops to assemble, two new and the one remaining from last week. Borders to add to that one quilt. Leaders and enders tumblers and blocks to sew from 240 of those half square triangles that I sewed last weekend. I know that this much prep and planning is not for everyone. I know that we all go to retreats and sew-ins for different reasons. Many want to visit more than sew. Many want to just sit and do handwork and be surrounded by the creative energy that is a retreat or a sew-in. One lady this weekend was working on needlepoint, moving forward a stalled project in that blocked off dedicated time. Me, I like to mark things off a list and I love the energy that a deadline or finite working time gives me. Let me know in the comments about your favorite part of a retreat or a sew-in. And while you're down there, don't forget to smash the like and the subscribe buttons. Go ahead and ring that bell to be notified about new videos and you can see what I get completed this go round in my everything I completed in June video that's coming up soon. I am excited to see how it all turns out. I have no idea if I will meet all my goals, but I have them set and I'm going to work. To learn more about my quilt breakdown process, check out the playlist on your screen. And never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy, and I'll see you next time.